Hi, thank you for watching Measuring Up. Today I am here with two awesome mm -hmm. ladies. We're going to talk through navigating the different seasons of life. Um, we're going to share our experiences, and what we went through, and how we came out on the other side. But first, I'd like to start out by introducing um, these special ladies. Um, first, I'm going to introduce Pastor Kathy Singletary. Pastor Kathy, can you tell, me, tell us a little bit about yourself? But first, let me say, she is not only my sister in Christ, she is my oldest sister. So I've had the uh, opportunity uh, to be in her awesomeness for like 46 years. Um, so Miss Kathy, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, and all that good stuff? Um, well, I am um, I'm a mom of seven. And I have um, a wonderful husband, seven awesome grandbabies, and um, I recently passed on the baton as youth pastor to my wonderful nephew. And um, right now I am um, concentrating on um, doing some motivational speaking and going into the schools and sharing different message, positive messages lately has been anti-bullying. All right. Um, Pastor Kathy, can you tell us a little bit about When She Speaks? Uh, when She Speaks. It is currently a campaign that I've started. And obviously the name is, well, When is W-I-N, exclamation mark, and then She Speaks. So When, obviously, um, the goal is to help people win um, through words, just by speaking, encouraging, uplifting, um, just encouraging unity, just encouraging people to love themselves and love other people. And through that, I believe people will win. Amen. And that's exciting. I've been, guys, you can follow her on Instagram, Facebook, and you have a YouTube channel, right? Yes, okay. Catherine L. Stamps. All right. Is that, uh, is that how they follow you on Facebook and Instagram? Um, C stamps on Insta C stamps 1967 on Instagram and then Catherine L stamps on Facebook. All right, guys, so let's go check out her Facebook page and Instagram and YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Next, I would like to introduce another special young lady. Um, I've had the opportunity to know her for 46 years because she is my twin sister, um, Nancy <laughs> Beeman. Nancy, thank you for joining me in, in this discussion today. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. I know a lot about you, but let the viewers know more about me. Um, I am. Um, I have a wonderful husband. I've been married for um, 27 years. It'll be 28 years in November. I have a wonderful son, um, Gerard Beeman, mm -hmm. Travis Beeman, a.k.a. Big Stuff. <laughs> um, about myself, um, I love dancing, any kind of dancing. I, um, I enjoy long walks. Um, I am the overseer of a praise dance ministry and um, I feel like my job is not just to um, choreograph the dance. My job as a leader is to, um, I, as I learned from my big sister, Kathy, how to encourage people and just um, and just teach them to pull that, pull that leader out of them, the leader that's already in them, and just pour out, help them tap into their strengths and help them to tap into stepping out of the box. I've also sat under your ministry and learned a lot. And it was, it wasn't just about praise dancing. It was about um, connecting and growing and learning mm -hmm. from each other. And just, yeah, I, I, it was, you're a great leader. Both of you guys are great leaders. Okay, ladies. So now that we're all grown up, let's just go back a little bit and talk about mm -hmm. some of the things that impacted us as children that we see come out as adults and um, how the imp things that impacted us negatively and some things that impacted us in a really good way. Okay. All right. So I think positively, um, for my parents, I would say for mommy, it was all the things she did with the kids in the community. Mm -hmm. um, I can see that now in myself with the youth and even at home, having all the kids over all the time and the games she used to play. So that positively impacted me. And from daddy, it was his um, work integrity. Like he worked many jobs to support us. So in my life, I've worked multiple jobs to support my family. 
So those are the two things that positively affected me. Mm-hmm. And then negatively if that affected me, it, I would have to say that, um, as you know, I've had some, like, rough, not rough relationship, but exposed as a child to some things from male figures that I shouldn't have been, and those negatively impacted me. So how do you see that? How did it neg- neg- negatively impact you um, as an adult? How does it come out as an adult? Well, now, for me, being healed has really helped, allowing God to heal me from, like, the things from my past. But before, as an adult, I was was on this, like, I hate men (laughs) type of um, thing. Just like the little rascals, the, the, what is it, the I Hate Women's Club or the I Hate Men's Club they had? Mm -hmm, Club. What was it? No Girls Allowed. (laughs) No Girls Allowed. So it was like that. I just, I couldn't stand men. I didn't even want to have boys. That's how bad it was. I'm like, if I ever have a son, I don't want him. And of course I have more, mostly sons. <laughs> um, so it just really, it just kind of, I was disgusted with men. I remember um, you always saying, I'll never get married. I don't ever want to yeah. be married. Yeah. I don't need a mm-hmm. husband. I remember yeah. growing I up hearing you say that all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I didn't want any parts at all. Well, <laughs> I wanted children, but I didn't want to get married. You can edit that part out. But... No, that's okay. <laughs> that's real talk. Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Miss Kathy, how did you come to that place where that turned around for you? Well, I honestly, um, I honestly had to honestly give it up and. And allow God to heal me. And I remember specifically it was a service and I had just had OJ, my youngest, my youngest son, um, biological son. I don't know how to put it, but I had just had him and I was hanging on to all the bitterness. And I remember there was a song during the altar call and it was, um, I will treat everybody right. That song Pastor Cape used to sing. And first he sang the part, I will trust in the Lord. And I remember the tears just started flowing because I honestly wanted to trust, but I was afraid. So when that song started playing, I will trust in the Lord. I just started crying and I just felt led to go to the altar. And then he started singing, I will treat everybody right. And boy, that just broke me. And I remember mommy came and got OJ out of my arms. And that day, it was like a burden lifted from the song. I can't even tell you what was preached, but it was the song that Pastor Kate was saying, he's no praise mm-hmm. and worship leader. Like, it wasn't like there was some amazing artist, gospel artist. It was Pastor Kate was just belting out those words, I would trust in the Lord, and I would stay on the battlefield. Like, don't give up the fight. You got to stay on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. He's saying those three verses, and those three verses just changed my whole life. Amen. Mm-hmm. I love to hear Pastor Kate sing that song, though. He's not a yeah. praise and worshiper, but I love to hear him sing that song. I almost yeah. broke out singing it when you was talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy, did you want to, I call her grandma, everybody, because although we're twins, we're, we're a lot alike, but then we have a lot of differences. And she has always yeah. been like the care caregiver or the one, the overseer and the protector. And so I grew up calling her grandma. So grandma, <laughs> did you want to yeah. chime in on that? Um, did you have a childhood experience that um, impacted you in a negative way or in a good way that, you know, that's, that now as an adult, you see how it's impacted you? Um, well, I do want to say I've gotten better. So um, as far as being the grandma role. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a, it's a good thing. I love it. It's helped me. It's helped, it's helped me, guys. It really has. Amen. Um um, I don't know. Um, growing up, um, I know that I was very shy growing up, and I was very much to myself. And um, one of the things that um, I've always carried was how um, baby sis was so friendly and open with everybody. And um, I was not very pleasant to people. <laughs> I didn't know how to have a conversation with people. So it was always negative when when people would come around. Like I know um, 
years ago, I'm not sure if you remember, if y'all remember, we lived across the street from the church. And every Friday, the youth would come like an hour and a half early. And I would get an attitude because I'm like, youth don't start until 7 o'clock. Why is everybody ringing my doorbell? So baby sis was always so welcoming, letting everybody in. You know, I'm going to get in the shower. Y'all come sit down in the living room. Come sit down in the living room. So one day, baby sis was not there. And I went to the door. And I was like, what do you want? They was like, oh, um, we here for youth. I said, youth is across the street. And I shut the door in their face. And it was raining out. And that wasn't so nice. So one day I heard somebody say, oh, no, you got the wrong twin. It's the other one. Don't, not that one. So that kind of stuck in my brain. And I've always said, you know, God, I want to be, I want to be able to embrace people. I want to know how to communicate with people, but I just didn't know how. So I always asked God, that was one of my biggest prayers. I wanted to be like my baby sis. I was like, I want to know how to embrace people as well. So that's one of the things that God has been working with me over the years of how to embrace people and um, just how to um, communicate with people and um, encourage people and, you know, things in that nature. So I feel like that's one of the, that really, your positiveness with everyone really impact me. So I want to say thank you for that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's so sweet. Well, Grandma, like you shared a little while ago, um, earlier in our conversation, you said that um, when you, as you lead for praise dance ministry, it's not just about dancing. And, and you do, you build relationships and you connect with those people. You love on those people. Those people text you about um, problems that they're having. Not just, they don't talk just about praise dancing. So you yeah. have you are warm and opening and encouraging and supportive and loving and easy to connect to. So mm-hmm. God is God has turned that around for you. So I'm proud of you and see to see that growth in you. <laughs> to God be the glory. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um either one of you can go first, but share something that you're really passionate about. You wanna go first, Grandma? Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. One thing I am passionate about is my family. I hope that our children, the bond that we've, that we've grown over the years, I, I'm always praying that our family carry that. Like this year, Tattoo was starting a, like a reunion for our generation. And I'm hoping and praying that over the years, our children would see how we have this bond and then they would carry it. And I see it in our children little by little. Um, as far as like with the nieces and nephews, I see them bonding in their way. So I'm really hoping and praying that um, as we bond, our children see that and they carry that. Amen. I think we all share that same passion about family. Miss mm-hmm. Kathy, what are you most passionate, or not most passionate about, but one of the things you're passionate about? Um, well, one of the things I'm most passionate about is our young people. Um, I, I don't know why, but I just feel like they're all my responsibility. Every <laughs> single child I meet, every single child I run into, mm-hmm. um, I often say I have a problem because <laughs> I just, I, I feel like they're all my responsibility and I'm honestly asking God to show me, even though that I feel like they're all my responsibility, what my role is, it's not always necessarily hands-on, I can be responsible without ever even meeting a child, just praying for them, supporting their parents, maybe. Um, it's an extreme passion, honestly, and I even act, w- wondered if it's even kind of like an addiction. <laughs> I just, I, I want to, anything I have, I'm willing to give up my living room, my dining room, mm-hmm. anything. My grandchildren, I mean, they could just have anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I feel like children are, they they just need so much. Our kids need so, so much. Yep. And the world doesn't have enough of it. And the enemy is like, he never stops. He never stops on the attack when it comes to us or, our, you know, the kids. And I feel like we should never stop. Like, right. we can't stop. We can't sleep. He doesn't sleep. So That's right. He comes hard. And so we got to go hard. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And unfortunately, there's not a, a, enough people going hard for our young people. No. They go hard it's, on them, but not for them. Yeah. 
It is a difference. So. It is. It's a difference. How do you balance um, the everyday life um, challenges, um, your, your, your responsibilities, husbands, kids, jobs, ministry? How do you find that time to um, for your scripture reading and your prayer time and developing the, your personal relationship with Christ? How do you balance that and fit all that in there, in the mix of everything that's going on? Um, for me, um, I had to learn to prioritize, like what's going to be most important to do, because there's like a thousand things, honestly, to do. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm trying to learn to prioritize, I should say. I'm not, sometimes I fail at it. I fail at it a lot. Yeah, I think we, I think we all <laughs> drop the ball sometimes. And yes. That's we okay. Not. We just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm trying to learn to, um, prioritize and not to beat myself up or be angry if I can't do something. So that's what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it is hard. Um, you try your best. Um, I always try my best to make sure no matter what, home is taken care of first. Um, I do drop the ball with that. Sometimes I've, I've been feeling so bad, but um, it does get rough. But sometimes I have to mark that calendar no matter what. It's family. Day, no matter what. I don't care if we're sitting home watching movies together. I don't care if we're sitting on the couch all day eating pizza. It's our day, no matter what. So sometimes I have to mark that on the calendar just for family time. But it's sometimes it gets rough, but it no matter what, God will make sure God always ba- makes sure that you're balanced out and that Amen. things work I, out. I find for me, I try so hard to get up like first thing in the morning. The first thing I try to do is like, okay, let me get some some word in me and then, you know, um, take some time to pray. And then on my lunch break and throughout the day, I try to get my scripture. But to sit down and have like some real serious, hardcore study time, um, I have to do better with, with that. I, I struggle. Like I said, I drop the ball sometimes, but I'm getting better. And I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't say that part. I'm so sorry. I'm thinking just of family. Yeah, family. that's okay. Yeah, but my t- my most important time is at nighttime when everybody sleep, and that's when I do my cleaning, and that's when I take my oil. I'm going through the house. I'm laying hands on the feet. I'm laying hands on the foreheads. I'm laying <laughs> hands on the doorway. Everything, and that's what that's my my time with God is at nighttime mainly, and throughout the day here and there yeah. on my computer, and I say a quick word, like a word of prayer sometimes. But um, mainly is my worship is at nighttime. Okay. And I like the nighttime, too. Once everybody's gone to sleep, it's like I can woosa and just yeah. think throughout the day and, 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 you know, just review or reflect on what's happened and what mm-hmm. needs my attention, what needs prayer. And those were the times when I also would go through the house and, like, tap on everybody's forehead with the oil. And the kids to this day talk about remembering waking up and saying, oh, that's just mommy touching me with that oil <laughs> and going back to sleep. <laughs> So, um, yeah, nighttime is, is a good time to, to handle yes. your business. Okay, Miss Kathy and, and um, Grandma, what advice do you have for someone that may be struggling to measure up with whatever society um, says that they should be? Uh, how can you encourage them? What words would you say to them? Yeah. Be, the best, be the best person that they can be as long as they're pleasing God, not to focus on and it's hard to say not to worry about what other people think because you do want to, you don't want to be the outsider, but um, as long as you be the best you, you represent um, who you truly are and um, God is pleased, um, you don't have to worry about nobody else. I know it's hard, but you don't have to worry about what nobody else thinks because that'll make you unhappy. Then you're not happy if you are trying to please and live this life that um, you're trying to live a life that's not you you're not happy so just live the be the best you and that's yeah. it yeah miss cappy um grandma said it all i would say don't try to measure up um because we can't be like anyone else but ourselves so if you try to be like the other wives or if you try to be like the other people um then what you're supposed to offer to the world is going to be missing because you're being like everyone else so just be yourself, like Grandma said, and just measure yourself against God's word. If anything, make sure that you're just doing what you're supposed to be doing according to what God says and not anybody else. 
Because then you have to change when a new group comes around and you got to change yep. who you are then and then be what the new group wants you to be and, you know, dress or act the way the new group wants you to act. So God is consistent. Just continue to do, you know, what God wants you to do, and that's it. Amen. Can you, can you guys share one of your favorite scriptures? Um, well, I would say my, my favorite, well, my favorite chapter has always been Proverbs because of the wisdom. Yeah. Always. But I would say as far as scripture, it would be love your neighbor as yourself because we put so much emphasis on what well, for me it shows that God really wants us to love ourselves. Sometimes we're Christians, we kind of tend to think that we're supposed to be lowly mm-hmm. people, we don't matter, but we do matter, and it's important that we love ourselves mm-hmm. so that we can love our neighbor. So if we only have a little bit of love for ourselves, we can only love our neighbors a little bit. So to me, that's what it's saying love your neighbor as yourself. How much do you love yourself? Okay, to love this person the same way. So you have to be really good to yourself. You have to see yourself, you know, your greatness. You have to see, you know, all the goodness within inside of you that God has given you so that you can see it in your neighbor as well. So that's one of my favorites. Amen. My favorite book is Job. I love the book of Job. Just talked about the struggles that he's been through. And um, how no matter what happened, he all, he's always kept the, the faith. He's always believed that God would see him through. And at the end, God did and blessed him with more than what he had. So I love the book of Job. And my favorite scripture, um, it's not in Job, and I can't find the book right now. I'm so sorry. I can't think of the book off the top yeah, of my head. Yeah, that's okay. But it's do unto others as you want others to do unto you. And I've learned that through over the years. Like, if you want people to treat to be kind to you, you have to treat them that same way. So I was like, all right, God, let me try it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so we'll have, of course we know that there's so many different seasons of life and um, there's some really good seasons and then there's some really, there's some really not so good seasons. There, there, there's some hardships, mm-hmm. some really difficult times. How do you get through them? Like I know we apply um, God's principles and we pray, we fast and all that good stuff, but how do you guys what have your experience been getting through um, the most challenging or difficult times or seasons in your life? Ms. Kathy? Oh, for me, honestly, um, we already know that it's prayer and, like you mentioned, prayer and fasting and God's word. But it's also you guys, like my sisters, Amen. you guys, um, Key and Nick as well. Just having somebody to kind of talk to or remind you sometimes, you know, listen, you know, this is going to be okay. That's honestly, it's people. That's why God created people because we needed each other. So it's been my support system. Amen. Mm -hmm. We know that we love our husbands. We just put that out there. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. Yeah, yeah. but the connection with um, having that circle, that's like you said, that that godly wisdom around you or that God, you know that these people aren't going to steer you wrong. You know, they're going to pray for you. They're going to love mm-hmm. you, hold you up. So, yeah, it's, I, I agree. It's the sisters, my sisters, that have really yeah. helped me. That get sisterhood is serious. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. And you just can't Everyone's have anybody good. in your sisterhood either. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> Grandma, mm-hmm. Grandma, did you want to share? Um. Yes. Um. You said as far as... um. You mean like when you're going through, how do you get through it? Right. Sometimes you just got to ride it out. And in the midst of riding it out, you like cats who said, you got to reach out to that support system. I think that is so important. It might sound old fashioned and corny, mm-hmm. but you know that God is going to see you through. It's the point of getting there to the end. Sometimes we have to go through it to grow. So I feel like as we're going through it, we need that support system. We need that encouragement. We know God is going to see us through. But as Kathy said, sometimes we need that reminder, you know, and that is my sisterhood. You know, our, our husbands love, they love us and they want to be there for us. Sometimes they're not a good ear. <laughs> they try to be I think it's so hard for them sometimes. They try. And I think they have attention space. <laughs> They try, but they don't know how all the time. 
look back for my sisterhood. You know, you guys give good advice, good encouragement. So I don't know where would I would be without you, ladies. I really Aww. don't. Oh, I love my yeah. sisters. <laughs> I love you. Okay. So, okay, we know we're not perfect. We're in this flesh, right? So, yeah. from, I know for me, it's hard to admit. Well, no, mm-hmm. not really. Have you been able to identify, like, your weaknesses or your flaws or things that you know you need to work on <laughs> to, um, to get better? Have you identified any of your flaws, and what are you doing, or how do you go about correcting them? Um, for me, it is, um, oh, I was, <laughs> it is honestly my, um, it's my cadence. It's sometimes the way I speak. Well, I shouldn't say the way I speak. When I get upset, I can feel myself going from zero to 100. Mm. Um, and it has been, now I have not cursed anyone out for like 29 years since OJ was a baby. Right. Honestly, haven't. But I can see, I can almost feel like I'm looking at myself because my head gets the going and I'm doing all of the ratchet moves. And I'm like, all right. And I'm trying to tell myself, calm down, calm down. Especially when the, you know, your kids sometimes they do things and you be like, I know, you know better. And I can feel myself like, all right. And I'm even talking to God in this same. Man, I'm like, Lord, I'm trying not to go off. And I'm, <laughs> and I, I'm like, I have to really get that together. I yeah. really, really do. Sometimes but I'm like, I can, oh. I can feel myself getting there sometimes. That's, we call that the single, t- our maiden names, all of our maiden names are Singletary. That's my dad's last name. That's, and we, we have a joke amongst ourselves where we say, oh, we'll go to, si- we're, what, we're Singletary. That Singletary yeah, comes out. That Roman. Yeah, that Roman <laughs> comes out of us. Our no. dad has had, we grew up knowing that our dad has had a temper. So yeah. I think we all battle that demon. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Grandma, yeah. how about you? Um, I think with me, and sometimes I feel shame, but I am very insecure. Um, as far as speaking in front of people, oh. when I'm amongst groups, I feel like my wording is just going to be wrong. And I am so embarrassed to like still speak because I feel like I'm going to say the wrong thing and Mm -hmm. um I'm still working and praying on that when I'm at work we have like the executives coming over the VPs I will find myself something to do so I don't have to go in the room with them and Mm -hmm. that that shouldn't that shouldn't be but I just can't help it I'm really working on that oh grandma and I understand I I have felt that way for so long and I didn't realize I felt that way. And then my kids shared Mary and Garrett, DJ's a talker, but Mary and Garrett shared that same feeling about um, being insecure and not wanting to speak up because they they didn't know if they was going to choose the right words to say or they measuring up. They wouldn't be able to measure up and hold a conversation appropriately or, and I've battled with that. And I still sometimes, don't feel like I need to, um, like, we measure it up. I've been afraid to have to do, because I get, I, I trip over my words all the time. I say whatever sometimes, and I, I, I know I need to um, filter. I try to um, be conscious, like I'm doing it right now, struggling to try to find, pull the words out of the sky, like what I want to say to express myself. In my, in my mind, I have it all figured out, but when I'm trying to say it, yeah. sometimes I struggle with it. So I understand yeah. what you're um what you're feeling yes. so we'll be in mm-hmm. prayer about that together because that's Thank the enemy you. wanting us to be fear huh guilty too no way miss cassie oh okay it's the same thing like i'm gonna say a, a bad word or i'll be like i'm gonna say something so bad or you know, silly. when you ladies speak it just flows i love to hear that speak that's sweet mm-hmm. thank you no like dang, I wish I could flow like that, but not you. A lot of pauses, a lot of pauses. <laughs> no. <laughs> the next time I speak, I, a lot of pauses, and that's why I speak very slowly. <laughs> so try not to make a mistake. Yeah, because I don't want to misuse a word or sound crazy, and I don't want people mm-hmm. walking away like, "What was she saying? Or what was she talking yep. about?" Mm-hmm. And I question myself. I, I'll ask my husband all the time, baby, did I sound? He was like, Ruby, don't start. He gets Aww. mad at me for doing that. I can't Aww. help. 
I'm like, babe, should I have said, did I say my words wrong? Now, when I'm angry, if I'm upset about something, um, my like Miss Kathy said, my hands is going. Like, I just said, I'm crazy for two, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care what I'm when I'm angry, I don't care. You're going to know how I feel. It's going to come out, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I get it gets all jumbled up and out, but I get it out there. <laughs> You know what I'm saying. You, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm like, you know exactly what I mean. <laughs> when I'm trying to have a conversation or if I have to speak in front of people, it's a wrap. It's definitely a wrap. <laughs> but God is going to help us with that because God, the enemy wants our minds to be trapped. And I know for me, sometimes fear shuts me down. And I like, I find myself like spiritually or mentally in a fetus position afraid to to move forward or to do anything and i know that's a trick of the enemy so i'm gonna be in prayer about that for all of us so as an adult um when was the last time or was there ever a time you went through something that seemed like it was pretty much hopeless or um like it was like one of the the hardest times you ever had to go through or a dry season um how did you come out of that on the, what was it, and how did you come out of that on the other side? Well, for me, uh, you know, I mentioned earlier about loving children and helping, and um, in doing that, <laughs> I actually almost faced charges. Um, in helping, um, there was a situation, and I was. It was said that I was neglectful. And I honestly wasn't, <laughs> but there was still an investigation. And if it was found to be true, I was going to be facing charges. Like literal charges. Like I've never been charged with anything. Never. <laughs> I never had a violation. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was really, you know, it kind of weighed on our entire family for it was a long period of time. And um, at first, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. um, like after about, I guess they were in their decision-making period for like a month. Then I was told that there would be some, there's a possibility that there would be charges against you. And I'm like, I literally did not do anything. And it was a long investigation. And, you know, it came out that there was no charges, but it was very, it weighed very heavy. Cause what do you do with that? <laughs> like that means, you know, what you love to do, you won't be able to do anymore. So it was, it was like a very heavy, heavy, heavy time. And it was just, honestly, I know, you know, we keep saying prayer, but it was, it was honestly prayer and just, um, constantly with my family. Cause we didn't talk about it with anybody, but together, just being able to talk about it together, um, was helpful, you know, talk, you know, you guys knew, but just to talk about it together, it was helpful. Amen. And God brought you guys out of that on the other side. Yes. Clean, no charges, yes. clean as a whistle. So yes. God is yes. just that good. Yes. Amen. Kama, did you have something you wanted to share, an experience that you wanted um, to share? Yes. Um, as Kat too was sharing, we went through something similar. Um, we opened up our home. Um, I'm sure I can't say names because of, you know, but we opened up our home to someone, thought we were, you know, doing the right thing, um, sacrificed a lot. You know, my husband took on a second job to make sure that this person was taken care of. You know, we did the best that we could. You know, when, when I went shopping, I always brought something back for that person, made sure they had, you know, um, and because they didn't get what they didn't, this teenager didn't get their way. So they decided to tell someone that I beat them with an extension cord, that I abused them, that I neglect them. I was like, here I am, you know, me and my husband and said that my husband chokes them, you know. So um, a knife is knocking on my door last Thursday, you know. So I was like, wow, all that we did. And this is because they didn't get what they want. You know, because we didn't always bend for them. You know, I was too strict when they were on punishment when I took away their favorite pair of sneakers. Um, they put a tantrum, you know. So just because I didn't give them what they want because they got on punishment when they were misbehaved, I was overreacting. 
you know, they can go to school and cuss the teacher out. When I come to the school, I'm overreacting because I showed up at the school. So um, these things that this young lady did, because she couldn't get her way, she decides to mm-hmm. go that I abused her, I'm, I mistreat her, um, I neglected her, my husband choked on her, you know, um, it hurt. It hurt big time. And um, But I do want to say that... Um, it wasn't a dark cloud over my house at that time. At the Amen. whole time, I had joy in my heart. Amen. But when I first heard, when it when I first heard, it did cut me very. It cut me hard. But um, it wasn't a cloud over my house. It was not when that person was here. There was a dark cloud over my home for about a year. But um, when I heard about the allegations, as I said, it cut at first. Mm-hmm. But I, we were good. We were good. Amen. Amen. They have she, the individual that you're speaking about might have had diapers on their side to come and knock on your door, but we serve an awesome God, and that's who you had on your side looking out for you and your hubby. So everything turned out, you know, for you guys in your favor. So, yes. yeah. Yep. Amen. Who is it that I know, we probably all say the same person? But do you have a hero or a shero in your life that you look up to that... I have two heroes. That you kind of model your... your yeah. Well, we, we don't want to say try to measure up or copy, but you know what I mean. We influence each other. Definitely. Yeah, so yeah. who... Do you guys have a hero or shero? Yes, I have two. Okay. Well, I have many. But I know one of my sheroes is my big sis, Katsu. I've always watched her growing up, and um, one thing she always to always say every time somebody um, tries to down themselves, she's always lifting people up. Always. I remember one time we were in Willowbrook Mall together. Catch. I'm not sure if you remember. It was a young lady. I think she was in the the food court, and she had a nice. I loved her style. I'm keeping it real. I don't think everybody would have appreciate her style. But I loved it. Um, I think she had a haircut short. She might have had a little mohawk. I can't remember. It was almost on the gothic side. And Kathy turned around and went back and was like, I love the way you look. You look very nice. I like how you look so. Kathy is always encouraging people and lifting people up. One time somebody had said um, something at church. I think Sister Teresa was talking about something. And she's like, see, I wish I could do stuff like that. I want to be like her so bad. And then Kathy says something in the nature of like, well, she could be, um, she's this and that, but your and Kathy pointed out all of her positive, her positiveness, you know, her her greatness, I'll say. <laughs> Kathy pointed out all of her greatness. And she's like, you know what? That's true. She's like, yeah, that's true. And she was like so. She's like, thank you, Pastor Kathy. And she felt so good. So I always appreciate how Kathy always, one, looked out for us growing up so much. She was like our second mom. And she's always uplifting people all the time. So I've always admired that about Kathy. And she was very selfless growing up. She always thought about everybody else before herself. She never thought about herself, but she always thought about everybody else. And that's one thing I've always admired about her. All the time. So she's my shero. She's my shero too. <laughs> my shero is my mama. Just watching her growing up, the things that she's been through, the things that she has overcome, and she's still walking strong. I've always admired my mama. I'm Amen. sure she she has to definitely tell her, maybe one day tell her other story. But um, I've always admired my mom, her strength. Aww. My sheroes are um. It's my mother. Since I was a child, she has always shared her life. Like, yes. always. Um, everything. Yes. <laughs> everything. Um, oh, she did? Everything. Oh. <laughs> and she's my hero because um, the stuff that she went through, it's just amazing to me that she has not been insane forever. <laughs> like <laughs> today, if people went through like a little bit of what she went through, 
they would have you know, all types of medication. Wow. So wow. she has impacted many lives and not perfectly always, but she has impacted many lives. And even though I feel mm-hmm. like I've been an adult all my life, <laughs> it's been it's it's done wonders for me and for other people. So she is my shero for being able to endure some of this stuff. Um and my sisters are my sheroes. Okay. Um, even though I'm the oldest, I've learned so much from you guys, like especially with marriage. I'm I'm still newlywed kind of five years. And um, I just learned so much. And Christianity, I've learned a lot from you guys. Okay. And then I just feel like there's sheroes all throughout the world. It might not be my personal shero right. every day, but I see sheroes. You know, as I'm walking through life, I see other women. And it's inspiring, even if it's for a second. You know, somebody bold enough to color their hair or somebody bold enough to wear a certain thing. You know, this lady hugged me once because I wore red pants and I'm plus size. She was like, girl. <laughs> <laughs> plus size store. And she was like, I'm going to hug you because you're wearing red pants. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, these things, and it's small things, but it still impacts your life. Like, Somebody has literally touched you, touched your life, left an impression. So, you know, there's sheroes everywhere, but my sisters and my mama, they're my sheroes. Aw, thank you. Aww. We love you. Well, um, ladies, I just want to say thank you so much for you. sharing. This has been awesome. I appreciate um, all your input. This has been some good discussion. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more from Measuring Up, please click the like button. Visit our YouTube channel, our Facebook page, or Instagram. But thank you again. Oh, bye. Bye. <laughs>